I am in a really cool spot right now. I'm just outside the fab lab of Delgado Community College. In here, the students are working on an amazingly cool project. In conjunction with NASA, they are designing payloads for a balloon launch to 100,000 feet above sea level to gather data that the students decide they want to gather. They not only have to build this payload, they have to make it as light as possible, make all the monitoring equipment inside, but they also have to document all of that and make a proof of concept that they submit to NASA. And if they've done it all right, NASA lets them fly. Let's go see what they're working on. Hello. Hello, nice. Joanna Rivers. Hello. Raymond Duplessis. A pleasure. Nice Adam, really nice to meet you guys. Um, so walk me through the program that I'm just about to see. All right. This is the Louisiana Aerospace Catalyst Experiences for Students program, and it is spun off from the La Space program out at LSU. Um, we are currently funded by NASA, and their job is actually to build a payload based on some very simple principles. We take them through engineering. We take them through electronics, payload development, documentation and doing project management? Uh, so it's a nine-month program. Um, our students come from a wide variety of engineering or no engineering experience. They have to learn the basics of electrical engineering, computer, software, uh, and essentially research science. So um, they start with the principles of scientific ballooning because eventually they're going to do some type of experiment that they can do attached to a high altitude balloon at about 100,000 feet. So this comes out of NASA's budget for educational outreach, is that right? Yes. And they're trying to hopefully foment more future NASA scientists and scientists in general. Yeah, uh, three years ago, we got a grant that was specifically uh, to geared towards doing community colleges. So that enabled us to get all the other equipment that the students are gonna need to get uh, everything done. And now we're trying to become a self-sustaining program. So we just get a small grant each year to travel out to Columbia Scientific Ballooning Facility so that they can launch their payloads. Yeah, and one of the interesting things about the first iteration of the program was that the space grant component that we had also wanted to attract women and minority scientists, which is very underrepresented, especially in this area. I think Absolutely. there was only one or two that were initially at the first few launches before we got in. But um, this group, we actually had more than 40% female participation during the process, during the time that we had the program running under that grant. How many years has the program been running? This is our third year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, it's fascinating too that you're concentrating so much on the written part because that's such a key part of science. I mean, the fun part is the is the iterative uh, uh, construction of prototypes and testing, but writing it all out so that you're communicating it to others is really the hard part. They have to write a full flight readiness review for their payload, and that's usually around a 120 page document. And yeah. the students get to go to NASA and yes. test out their devices. Oh yeah, they yeah. have to stand up in front of the Columbia scientific. Uh, ballooning facility engineers and scientists uh, and they have to give a presentation to convince NASA that their payload is ready to fly and if they do not properly pre uh, present for that they have about two hours to fix their presentation and you know make sure that they are meeting everything on that checklist to go. I'd love to talk to some of the students about the, the iterations and the different designs they've been working with. Well there's uh, some of them are some of them are here. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Hey guys. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, I'm very good, very good. I, I hear that they've been doing this program now for three years. So can you talk to me about why these things are the shape they are and why they're built the way they are? See, as you can see, the designs uh, progressed throughout the years. We started out uh, three years ago, pretty much a shoebox. And then uh, last year they used what's a uh, low emissivity foam. And that foam has the ability to provide a very high R value, and R value is uh, the ability to resist uh, temperature change source. So in every way, it's maintaining the internal temperature of the core components yes. without too much variation at all. That is correct, and the goal is to make sure that we do not go below negative 20 degrees Celsius. And the reason for the construction of the payload is it was wow, just the it's so light. Yes. 116 grams. That's how much this weighs? Yes. What is your That's target? Like, what is, you have a design restriction in terms of how much total weight 500 you 500 grams is our restriction. Oh, so you're way under. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, 
the whole goal of the construction was to minimize space by the structural supports are on the outside and we ended up you know hollowing it out to cut more away because it was not necessary. So if the yellow one's the first year, is this the second year? Yes. And then both of this, these were the these were both the second year. Two different teams? Two uh, different approaches. Last year, this team had a leg up. Uh, they were electrical engineers. They built their own circuitry, um, completely threw away the, the prefabricated board and designed their own and cut every little bit off. There was a contest last year to see who would have the lightest payload. And this team from Delgado Community College <laughs> blew away everyone else. Really? And this year, we have to one-up them. And this is your guys? And this, yes. these are our guys. Do you feel like the collaborative process is leading you to the best solution each time, even if it's a rough process? That's the goal. Yeah. yeah that, that's where we're ending up with this. This is how we came up with the design originally. It uh, started out as just a cylinder, and the cylinder evolved, and it's continually evolving. Um, so you guys haven't flown these yet? No, no not yet. Not. No. Um, so what is that plant? How does that, how does that, how does that exactly work? Uh, our first try at flying is the real deal. Um, now, this is a NASA program, and so there's an awful lot of paperwork detailing every decision we made and how we came to build this thing that we want to use their money to fly it. And they read it, and if they think it's worthy, we get to go. So hopefully we will connect all the dots in a, in a way that I guess they're grooming us for, NASA kind of yeah. process, because they don't get to experiment too much before they send things up. And if it works, great, and if it doesn't, everybody's upset. Right. So we're investing two whole semesters in this, and we're going to watch it fly once. So it sounds like there's, the construction is just a small part of the whole project, the writing about it and the figuring out how to write about it and how the design should go is, is, is significant. Are you reading other people's papers uh, from NASA archives in order to understand how it gets talked about? Or? I've been doing some reading of like some solar radiation articles and things like that, educational things about that. But um, that's really, that's the most difficult one, uh, I believe this one, with the radiation, because these are pretty simple to understand and like their purpose, but I uh, previously had no knowledge about anything about solar irradiance until I started working on this. So at the beginning of this project, you start and you think, wow, I'm gonna actually work with NASA, and you have in your head a picture. Mm -hmm. um, how much of that picture was left, and how much were you surprised by the process? The first bubble to pop was, if you put a camera on there, you better have a real good scientific explanation for why that camera's going up. And Fascinating. That was, uh, I'm guessing that's what everyone wanted to do at yes, the beginning. Yes, absolutely. You gotta put a camera Everybody, on. Ooh, I want, a, I want a picture from 100,000 feet of me waving at the camera. Right. And no, you, you have to have an an exact scientific reasonable reason for putting this weight on this payload and um, that was the first one and it's still fascinating and interesting but yeah it's we're not playing yeah we're working hard at it so apparently we're going to do a test with one of these tell me what, about what's going to happen yes yeah, so we're going to do the test here with big easy um, Mohammed here to design the circuitry. He's been doing calibrations on it. And the whole point of this drop test is to see that the circuitry is able to hold its uh, calibration and that the, the structural integrity will be able to uphold the fall. And uh, 20 feet is the minimum here. All right. Well, let's drop it. All right. Yeah. All right. Go for it. Does it hurt to watch it go? <laughs> the outer casing looks like it survived, but now it's time to go back to the lab and make sure the electronics still work. Okay, everything looks to be fine. It's still reading like it should, and still taking taking data. But because uh, if had, if it was not working right, the number would have been way off. But the number seemed to be right here. Well, the electronics survived this drop test with flying colors, um, but remember, these guys can't
test this thing at 100,000 feet elevation until it's at 100,000 feet elevation. So there's a lot more iterative physical and software tests for them to do before they actually submit their final paper to NASA. Right now, it's looking pretty good. The kind of experience they're getting in developing this is just invaluable.